it's mostly natural seashore, so there's a lot of area which is still very pristine compared to other places that you might go on vacation. So you can still see things in a natural state as they, as they were thousands of years ago. For those who seek the calming nature of ocean breezes and footprints in the warm sand washed away by time and tide, the Gulf Coast is a sanctuary for the soul. As Texans, we love to point out that our very own Padre Island is the longest stretch of undeveloped barrier island in the world. And few know it better than Dr. David Hicks. Only thing is, it's not the breezes or the surf that attracts this scientist to the seashore. It's an island eyesore. Piles and mounds as far as the eye can see of seaweed. What people refer to as seaweed that washes you know, in on the shores periodically is referred to as sargasm in kind of the, the technical uh, community. So when people come to the beach and they see sargasm, you know, the seaweed washed up on the shore, that's uh, almost a disappointment for them. So it can be uh, quite unpleasant for you know, people that are coming to the beach maybe for the first time. Now well, these twisted, matted mounds of sargasm have become a familiar sight on the entire Texas coast. Lately though, the seaweed is migrating in record numbers. But come on, everybody thinks this looks disgusting out here. I don't know, it's kind of like the fall colors when the foliage changes. Uh, look at it, it's a big mess on our beach here. Well, I can see that it might be unsightly to some, but it actually does a lot of good uh, to the beach environment. All right, show me. Dr. Hicks is, for all practical purposes, the Lone Star State's leading expert on what to most folks is a nauseous nautical nuisance. You see how thick this mat is here Aren't on the beach? Aren't you afraid of what you're going to find under there? No, there's not going to be anything in there to hurt me. It actually starts out its life in the northern Atlantic. It floats up to the surface because it has these small little gas bladders that make it float. And once it's floating on the surface, it continues to grow on the surface of the ocean. It's kind of amazing stuff, isn't it? It's very amazing stuff. And when it comes in very fresh, you'll see that birds and crabs and everything will just kind of flock over to it because this is like you know a smorgasbord of uh, food resource that's coming, that's coming in from the, from the ocean, yeah. From his laboratory at the University of Texas at Brownsville, David conducts research on all things foul and hideous that lurk in the ocean depths. There are far more hideous things that people can come into contact with in the ocean than sargasm. Here's, you know, um, an octopus. Would you rather step on this or step on sargasm? Um, hmm. Yeah, you're right. So all this kind of collection of animals are things that occur in, in Gulf waters, both near shore and, and offshore and, and actually on the beach. Uh, you're right, I'd much rather run into seaweed than any of these things. Are you possibly the only human being in the world that loves this stuff? Uh, I don't think so. I would say, you know, that we are a minority for sure, but I know that there are other scientists out there that, you know, study sargasm and, and feel exactly the same way. So, Bob, when you look out here on this part of the beach, what do you notice about everywhere there's a little bit of a, a mound? Where the, where the sand is built up? Where the sand is built there, up. There's seaweed on top of it. There's seaweed on top of it, right? So that seaweed is actually trapping that sand and keeping it here on the beach. It's building beach. It's building beach. Wow. It comes as ironic to scientist David Hicks that the very thing that's nourishing the beach is cursed by those who say they love this massive stretch of barrier island. He says there's really nothing to fear or even to dislike about sargasm. It's a part of the coastal landscape, something to be celebrated, he says. It's a gift from the Gulf on the Texas coast. So what do you think when you see all this? Well, I think it's led a, a very productive life, having started out in the Sargasso Sea and building an ecosystem offshore and then coming over here and nourishing our beaches. And still working today, huh? Still working today. I think I'm starting to love it, too. That's good. <laughs> 
you don't take a trip for 3,000 miles if you don't have a good reason. And that's what this stuff does every year.